There are a multitude of reasons why an engine can end up at this end of my shop. Someone could have run it without oil. Someone could have believed their dash when they said the percent of oil life left. Someone could have sucked in water, over revved it. Tons of reasons and we've seen a lot on this channel, but today, something new. Now I've torn down burned engines before, but I haven't done it on the channel. So today we're gonna take apart a six liter LQ4 that was externally overheated. Not all burned engines are created equal and I mean, there are several different degrees of how bad an engine can be burned. And the reason I chose to buy this LQ4 is because while it looks atrocious, and I'll be honest, it's not that bad. There's still plastic left. I've seen these engines where there's no plastic left. And when they're that bad, you find pools of water in the cylinders. It's usually rusted up from someone trying to put the fire out or it being left out in the rain. I'm not expecting a lot with this. I'll be completely honest. I bought this with the hopes that the short block made it. And the reason I hope that is because late LQ short blocks are very desirable. Around 04, 05, they started switching to the Gen 4 rods while retaining everything else Gen 3. They're sometimes called Gen 3 and a half. But this is out of an 05 Silverado 2500. I actually found pictures of this. I found the VIN number from this. So I got a story with it. I have no idea how many miles are on it. I know I'll get asked that question, but I'm hoping the short block is relatively buildable. And if it's not, I hope the crank is okay so that I can use that in my LS2 project. Before we get started, I'd like to mention why I don't do that many Gen 3 LS architecture engines on this channel. And when I say Gen 3, I'm talking about 99 to 06 or 07 classic. And the main reason is there's not a lot to sell off of them. I mean, I can sell plenty of short blocks, but the heads don't have a lot of value, especially the six liters. And if the bottom end is bad, I'm left with literally a pile of scrap. So I'm hoping this bottom end is good, but I've seen some vehicles where an owner or someone torched the truck or car to get out of having to repair it. They can make a claim on their insurance and then they go buy something else. I'm hoping that's not the case. First thing we're gonna do is pull the plugs and see what they look like. Well, the good news is I don't see anything too atrocious. There are no smashed electrodes. Uh, all these plugs look pretty similar. They're a little lighter than I like to see, and they're definitely not new, but they all look about the same, which isn't a bad thing. And they're all AC Delco plugs, which is also a good thing. Now I'm gonna try to get the coil packs and some of the outside parts off of this engine. This thing got pretty hot, so it might be a challenge to get uh, my socket on the heads of the bolts and nuts. Now, normally I don't like cutting wire harness, but I think I can do it on this one. Now let's see if we can get this harness kind of out of the way. Okay, that's still pretty strong. I don't know why I thought that was just gonna rip out of the way. Definitely not. Let's just trim this back a little bit. There's a bunch of harness here that's all melted. I don't think I'll be selling this one. All right, let's try to get this harness off the intake here. Not really worried about breaking anything. There we go. Getting somewhere here now. I can almost see what I'm doing. Well, there's the spinal cord or harness. Let's see if I can actuate that throttle plate. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, we're gonna try to take that clamp off and pull this, whatever this is. This will just come right off, right? It is coming off. Let me get my pry bar here. Oh crap, I don't want to break that throttle body. Yeah, I think that's officially a hot air intake. 
Let me get a better look at the throttle body. Yeah, the throttle body's perfect. Just a little, little toasty. I think a lot of this is the engine cover. Let's try to get the rest of this. I think all this plastic here is the engine cover. I think I can get to most of the, nope. Right, now I can get to more of the bolts. This is gonna be the most telling when I get the uh, intake pulled off as to what the rest of the engine's gonna look like. That and the valve covers. I'm basically just making sure I have access to all of the bolts for the intake manifold. I do not wanna struggle getting to those. I can avoid it. I don't know what that is. Maybe one more. All right. I think I can get on all the bolts. And I think this intake will come off. Start on the left side. Okay, so far so good. Now I've got one hose to cut, coolant hose to the throttle body. Oh, look at that, the intake is already loose. That's great. All right, so we got lots of junk and some of this is gonna end up going down in the intake ports, it's okay. Um, it'll be fine, I should probably get a vacuum. But, everything looks okay. The wiring for the knock sensors is melted. Oil pressure sitting unit is melted, it's all melted back here. About what I expected. I don't think it got too hot, that's part of the fuel rail. More plastic. I'm gonna get a vacuum, get this stuff sucked up, and we'll continue. Before we go any further, I'm going to take a moment and unbolt the power steering and alternator bracket, the AC bracket. I'll get the motor mount brackets out of the way to kind of clean this up and make it easier to work on. Next, let's get the water pump out of the way. No coolant. Success. All right, this engine doesn't look so bad now. Let's get the driver's side valve cover off. This actually looks pretty good. I expected to find a lot more junk in here. There's a little bit right here from the breather tube, from the crankcase ventilation. The rest of this looks all right. If there was ever an engine where a dipstick would fight me, it would be this one. And it looks like Someone used some shears or bolt cutters and just right off. There's the bracket for that. We'll get this out of the way and then we'll get this valve cover off. There's definitely something inside here. I'll be able to get it out once the valve cover is off. Aha, I'm sure someone just put that in there. It looks surprisingly clean. It's not perfect. No signs of metal, which is key. Let's crack these rockers loose. These are all very clean. Now I'm going to remove the steam pipe and the top head bolts. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose and see what the inside of this engine looks like. That's not very tight. Oh no. Why are these loose? I mean, this is like no force at all. 
I feel like I could do this with a quarter drive ratchet. I don't, I don't understand. Here, let's, let's try something. All right, we're gonna try using my cordless chuck driver that I use for most of my teardowns. We're gonna see if we can take the head bolts out with it. Oh, maybe that one's tight. Wow. Okay. I don't think these were tight enough. Not a good sign. Oh, still got one. Let's just set that there. All right, please don't turn me into Miles Davis. Uh, that's not too bad. Wow. That's actually pretty nice. Oh man, did I get lucky? I might have gotten pretty lucky here. Well, this looks suspiciously nice. Everything appears to be in one piece. Cylinder walls look pretty nice. Looks like a little bit of a rust stain down here in the bore. I can barely feel that. I'm gonna wait to turn this engine over until I get the other head off because if there's anything in the cylinder, I don't wanna cause more damage. Let's go check out the cylinder head. The cylinder head also looks pretty good. I don't see any issues, nothing really notable. The head gasket looked good. I'm not quite sure the head bolts didn't seem as tight and that's the whole reason I use a breaker bar because if there's a problem, I can feel it. The impact is zip stuff out. And if it's loose, I can tell with the breaker bar. Now for the other side. Okay, there's a little bit of issues here. I've been waiting for the right scenario to show the difference between a good push rod and a bad push rod on an LS. And this is a good push rod. You can see the end of it is shiny. It has a mirror finish. And this is a bad push rod. It's got a dull kind of a machined look like a satin finished. And that means there could be some oiling issues in the rest of this engine. And the same goes true for the rockers. This is the one from the worn push rod. As you can see, it has kind of a satin finish. The cup is actually worn where the push rod sits. And this is a good one. It has that same mirror finish. We look at all. Now let's pull the upper head bolts. The head bolts on the other side seem very loose. So we're going to try to get the head bolts out using my impact driver here. I have no idea if it'll be able to take them out. I might break my bit. So be it. Wow. Oh. Looks like we got to crack them loose anyway. They still don't seem that tight. That one was tight. Did I miss this one? I think I missed this one. It's amateur night, apparently. This side looks good, too. Is this a good engine? This might be a good engine. Somehow, this side looks even better than the other. I don't see any rust stains. No signs of water in here, which is a big concern when you get an engine that came from a burned vehicle. Everything seems pretty good. Let's see how it turns over. It's pretty decent. All the cylinder walls look nice. Man. 
I think I got lucky here. It's just that one cylinder with a rust stain. Probably come out with a dingle ball hone. All right. This head also looks pretty good. Normally I would leave the lifters in a short block like this because I'd like to sell this short block complete and it's not a DOD or AFM engine. However, because we saw the wear on the push rod, I want to get the lifters out and make sure there's no damage to the cam, no damage to the lifters, and more importantly, no damage to the block. See, I don't even know if I can get this out. None of these want to come out at all. There's one. These were a little tight in the bore, I'll be honest. I don't usually see them that tight. I've got two lifters that are stuck. Let's see if we can kind of spin these out of here. There we go. I'm not quite sure why that was like that. Well, all these lifters look all right. They were a little tight in the bore. Bores look okay. I still think it's a good idea to put new lifters in anytime you have an engine this far down. And this was a, this was a side with the worn push rod and rockers. It's a little stiff there. That's what she said. You guys knew that was coming. Not terrible, not perfect. All right, next let's get the crank pulley off so we can pull the front timing cover and get the cam out and inspect the cam and cam bearings. What the? Okay then. All right, I guess we'll get the big one now. All right, now we're going to try the three quarter inch impact. Wow. I've never had one do this before. Wow. All right, let's get the puller. And yes, we're going to use a push rod again. It's fine. Just, just don't pay attention to this. Don't look here. Didn't even bend the push rod. Get this front cover off. Not terribly dirty. Now these early engines don't have a tensioner to go bad. They just don't have a tensioner. That's pretty normal. Save this and all the bolts because we're gonna go back together, maybe. how easy this cam comes out. That came out perfect. The cam looks really nice. The main reason I wanted to pull the cam is to get an idea of the condition of the cam bearings. It's kind of hard to see the cam bearings in the block and it's kind of a deal breaker for some people. So I wanted to get the cam out, see if there was any damage. And there really isn't. I just gave this thing a brake clean bath. Looks really nice. I'll likely put this back in before I sell this short block. And someone will likely put an aftermarket cam in it. It's really hard to show the cam bearings further back in the block, but they all look pretty good. Kind of figured so by looking at the cam. There's no grooves in the cam. All right, now it's time we're gonna turn this engine upside down 
get all the fluid out of it. And I get a lot of people telling me, well, you should just pull the plugs on the block and drain the coolant that way. And if this wasn't the rust belt, I would completely agree with you. But I have seen situations where you pull the plugs out and it rips the thread out of the block. At that point, it's just a bunch of work for what? So that I didn't make a mess? I'd rather just make a mess. Not too bad. All right, now let's get the pan off. Somebody's been in here already. Well, the first thing that caught my eye is that whoever chomped this dipstick tube also did it with the dipstick in there, which is Pretty funny if you ask me. But there's no real debris in here. Pickup is nice and clean. No real signs of oiling issues other than that one push rod. Looks like there could be something in there. Let's try to fish that out. What is that? I don't know what this is. Well, that's an unidentifiable pickup object. No idea what that is. Maybe RTV? It's like plasticky. Oh, you know what? Maybe that came off of, uh, oh, no, is this thing caught on fire? Any ideas? The pan is free of debris, but it has quite a bit of sludge on that baffle. No chunks of metal, so that's good. Let's get this pickup and window tray off. The O-ring is pretty flat, but it's not split. It's pretty soft. I've seen worse. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's been in here, but nothing's horrendously loose. That's a good sign. There's a dipstick. Let's see if we can get this dipstick out the right way. I don't know if this is the right way. I feel like I might need to get it hot. Yeah, we're going to need to get it hot. Nope. Okay. That's going to be a project for tomorrow. Now, I really don't expect to see any damage by pulling a rod cap. However, I like to be sure if I'm going to sell an engine as a good builder short block, I like to know what's wrong with it. So we're going to pull a couple rod caps. We're going to pull seven and eight, check those out because those are farthest from the oil pump. And then I'll likely pull one other random cap just to make sure they're all consistent. Not bad at all. Crank looks really nice. No grooves that I can feel with my fingernail. Bearing is very nice as well. It's not perfect. There's a few lines in it, but still pretty good. Let's get another one off. Same thing here. Looks really nice. Bearing looks nice too. Journal is nice. Got a pretty decent short block here. This is pretty much best case scenario for me. I It's a big risk to buy a Gen 3 engine and hope that the bottom end is good, but I, I kind of use some intuition there. I've seen a lot of burned engines before, and the outside is really scaly. It's definitely a rust belt engine, but the inside, which is what matters, that looks really good. There's no signs of oil starvation outside of one worn push rod. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out.
When I first saw that engine, I thought, wow, this thing got so hot, but really it wasn't that bad. The melted wiring harness, the melted intake manifold, and the plastics, they all made it look so much worse than it really was. I bet if I had put that engine into a different truck, it would have run pretty good, but selling an engine like that without knowing, it's just not something I do here. Burned engines carry a lot of risk, especially since most people use water to put them out and water inside of an engine is not usually a good thing. I'm glad I pulled that engine apart. That bottom end looks really nice. I could have gone a little bit further. I could have pulled the main cap and checked the main bearings. I could have pulled the oil pump apart, but I saw no signs of metal in the pan. There's no reason to suspect there's any oiling issues with that engine at all. A little bit of wear on one of the push rods is not a huge deal. I do wish I knew how many miles were on this engine, but it's a good builder short block. It's a LQ4 24 tooth reluctor wheel. It's pretty desirable, especially since it's got Gen 4 full floating rods and pistons. Someone's going to make a lot of power on that engine. And if you'd like to buy that short block or any of the other parts off of any of the other engines I've torn down, if you're looking for LS pullouts, I've got lots of Gen 3 stuff, some Gen 4 stuff as well. Uh, I'm going to leave my email in the video description and I have to laugh. The last LS teardown I did, I posted my Tahoe, an idle clip, and rev clip at the end of the video, and I said it had a misfire. I was joking. It's got a cam in it. It's supposed to sound like that. Anyway, I appreciate all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.